for player function u u o o enter owner of the dying hero so now if they had him selected we're just going to clear the selection so that they and then they can't get it back after that just in case this thing doesn't take care of it and i'm not sure if it did because i did these both at the same time so good old me doing stuff at the same time so i wouldn't know anyways um we want to display a message so new action u uh, t text message display message you will revive in 20 seconds press ok um, for we don't want to do it to all players we want to convert player to player group and then the player we're gonna pick is gonna be function u u o o owner of the dying hero and to the subtitle area is fine and then we're gonna wait uh, three seconds so do a new action general wait three game time seconds um, is preferable for this because the death time as denoted by the oops by the um, death behavior that we gave our guy is 20 seconds so um, and that's going by game time so you want to keep all your triggers with game time for this um, so we're gonna wait three seconds so when when he's fully faded out and when this little spirit animation is played through um, we're gonna unit move move unit instantly and we're going to move the variable dying hero instantly to whatever point you want. In this case, it's point zero zero one. And that actually brings me back to a mistake I just made right here. Uh, we don't want to play the death animation at this random point. We want to make it at uh, the position of the variable dying hero. Sorry about that. My mind must have blanked when I was making that. Um, but here we actually want to respond. Well, we want to move him there secretly to this point when he's already invisible. Um, and the reason that we made this dying hero instead of using triggering unit this whole way is right here, after waiting three seconds, if you tried to use triggering unit here, it would probably not call anything, meaning that uh, it lost its reference to the actual unit. And that's what happens when you put wait, wait actions in your triggers. So it's good to make sure you store it in an actual local variable. So we move them, and then now we can wait, um, wait uh, what's see 17 game time seconds so that'll add to 20 between these two weights so after 20 seconds what we're gonna do is we're going to actor send actor message to uh, destroy press ok and we're just gonna destroy the animation actor so I probably could have put this one right in here um, after three seconds but just to be safe in case you have like a longer spirit explosion coming out from your corpse or something um, we're gonna clean up the actor 17 seconds later um, you don't even have to do this if you don't want you could just completely remove this line and remove this and remove this but um, so while visually there would be no like after this animation plays and that little spirit explosion happens visually the animation would be gone but in memory it would still be there I think so it's always good to just send this destroy message to any actors you've made uh, after the animation's over, so 17 seconds is more than enough uh, safe time. And then we're going to copy all of these, all of those turn heroes, highlightable, etc. Paste them down here, and we're going to change them all to be, oops, all to be on. Okay, sorry about this time consuming stuff. This is all just bookkeeping to make sure it's seamless and flawless for the player. Um, and lastly, we want to click on this and set it. We want any minimap uh, visibility to be back on for that. And um, at this point, uh, you could, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to camera pan uh, back to your hero, but you don't have to do that, um, depending on what type of map you're doing. So we're going to pan the camera back for function UUOO, owner of the dying hero, to, and then we're just going to go to the point. 001 since we know we spawn there over one second and then the other thing I'm going to do is copy paste that and then go unit selection select unit select variable dying hero for player uu o -O, owner of the dying hero so that pretty much takes care of everything now um, let's go in game and make sure I didn't screw up which I might have Oops, sorry, um, one thing we do need to actually do is um, 
change this condition. Uh, I just realized this as the game was loading to not be this because the hero will have that at all times. We need to make sure he has incapacitated equal to equal to true. Um, that way, when he's that way, and not every time he's attacked, this is going to be run only when he's incapacitated, um, which which will only happen once um, because he's not attackable after he's incapacitated. So now let's go test. Okay, here's my little weak guy, and I'm going to go encounter some zerglings. They're slowly take me down, and boom, I'm dead. The little spirit animation played. You'll revive in 20 seconds. I can't click him, and I can't do this. You can see the little visibility thing here. Um, usually you respawn in areas that are already visible, like the town, and there he's back. And it did auto-select and pan, but I was just too quick. Um, I got a half health, which is something that's specified, I think, inside the uh, inside the blizzards respawn thing um, but if he's respawning in an area like a town that already has visibility in that region like I assume most people would do respawn like that so um, the visibility is not a big issue like that I can see where he is sitting but you could always like hide the unit or some find some way to creatively remove that or set the unit visibility lower if you can do that um, so anyways that's all I wanted to show and um, I'm actually going to be using this in my uh, RPG which I've sadly been very slow on working on so um, I hope people actually find this one a lot more useful than my past Hero Revive as this is a lot cleaner and you don't have to do as much work because Blizzard took care of it all. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope to have more tutorials out soon.